name's Brian Campbell, and this is the birth of a railroad that we've got in here. Uh, it's a plan that spent over a year developing just the yard alone, freight yard, and it's growing into the first level being almost tracked, about 85-90% tracked. And it's a Southern Pacific, somewhere around 1930 through about 1950 era. I might let one or two diesels sneak onto the layout, but mostly steam. And uh, definitely the old Southern Pacific daylight colors for the uh, uh, passenger trains. So it's uh, been with the help of the uh, NRA, NARB, NARB, North Atlantic Rail Barons, uh, that this has progressed as far as it has. This has been one year since it started. And uh, we'll take a look around and, and show you what's here. Uh, this is the uh, rail yard. It's uh, this is where we first started laying the track. It's about uh, 28 to 30 feet long, and it has passenger terminal and yard on one side, and then the other side is freight. Uh, unfortunately, right now, the, uh, the great BB&E Railroad owns uh, a locomotive out there and about seven box cars, so uh, there's lots of room out there on the freight yard for all that stuff. And of course, the passenger cars are and need to be worked on first. That's why they're kind of laying hilter skelter at the moment. Uh, it's wired, and uh, the switches are in on the main line. And you can take a wander around the room. Mm -hmm. The yard lead heads off to your left as uh, the camera rotates a little bit. And there's a uh, about 12, 14 feet of yard lead in there so that you have enough room to put a, a freight train in without fouling anything and a passenger train because there's three yard leads. And those yard leads eventually all coalesce into the one main line, as you'll see in a minute. The main line starts from there and it heads on down towards what we call the U-Bend. All right. This is the main line coming out. You'll see there's a siding a little bit lower than the main line and then there's also an industrial siding as well for future industries. And as it goes down around the corner, there'll be a river in there. And at the far end of the U-Bend, there'll be a bridge on both levels for the river to go under. And then uh, Yeah. So that starts where the bridge is going to be and then it takes off and the main line goes around at the corner and then again it splits into two lines. Once it gets those two lines, each one goes eventually onto the helix. One line will head south out of the helix, back over the yard. One line will head north out of the helix and back over this same track again. There's uh, some sidings down here. There's about three industrial sidings and also a parking spur for a helper engine as you get down towards the other end. Okay. And there's the helix at the other end. Right down there. That we're Shot looking the at. Helix, yeah. And that's just the start of the helix. The helix is going to run up, what, five levels? It's going to run up five levels, so it's equal to about the black line and probably a little bit over that's on the wall. Probably be a little bit higher than that to start with and then we'll eventually head down downhill. Okay. One of the things we've tried to do is have the railroad wander around. It doesn't go straight line down the sides. Mm -hmm. it, it goes up slight grades and down slight grades. Uh, a lot of the uh, rails are, the curves are super curves. And uh, there's a lot of effects that aren't visible yet that will be later on when you have multiple trains running. Mm -hmm. Do you have a design on how many trains are actually going to run at a time? At the moment, uh, the entire BB&E stock, one. Oh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but in the future. In the future, I mean, this can handle a train coming out of the yard, a train coming into the yard for classification, tear down. Uh, it can handle a couple passenger trains. 
And plus there'll be an upper yard as well that won't be as massive. And uh, it'll be located over here on this wall. And I would hope that we could run easily six trains on this. That would be the hope. Uh, mm -hmm. Some freight and passenger mix. Now one thing that you've done that um, I don't think anyone else in the North Atlanta Rail Barons has done with their railroads is block detection. You want to explain what that is and what it's going to do for your railroad? Well, the object behind block detection is eventually when you hook this up to a computer, the computer can detect if there's equipment in that, in that block. And they tell you on, on the internet that a block can be anywhere from a car length to the length of the whole train. These blocks are set up so I can tell if there's somebody in a switch or if that siding's clear. Uh, basically, it gives the dispatcher an added help in dispatching trains around the layout. I don't want computer run train layout. Um, personally, I don't care whether the computer has any fun running the trains or not. This is for people. And uh, we've envisioned this is going to take several people to run the yard because you've got the freight yard, you've got the pasture yard, you've got the uh, roundhouse section up there, which is currently under a lot of equipment to build the helix. Um, so it's going to take a few people to operate all of this. And my vision was to have industries have a place to go, a reason to go there, and a place to move on, or a reason to move on from there to somewhere else. Okay. Like picking up empties and... Picking up empties, dropping them off. So if you have a... And picking up loads. If you have a vineyard, you might pick up the grapes and take them to some place to, to have them produced into wine, or it might go to market, or it might go to a cereal company, who knows? Mm -hmm. Or made into juice. Okay. So there's a lot of places the industries are fed by the produce and whatnot. And since this is California in the 30s and 40s, that's mainly a produce area. Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe some oil in there too. This is a, a computer generated drawing of the first level. This is your yard through here. Green is mostly pasture, gray is freight. And this dark gray is a light rail that runs on the side of the yard. It's more like an old yard track. Mm -hmm. It does tie in eventually. And again, it goes around the U-shape, comes over here to the helix, goes up the helix. Over here is your turntable. And of course, all of this is keyed out with buildings and things and where they go. And that's all been noted in the key. This is a drawing or computer rendition of just the yard. And it tells you all these heavy black lines, short ones, are where the blocks are. That will let me know uh, basically where trains are located. There are about 44 blocks for the yard alone. So I'm doing this heavy so that the computer will have an accurate reading on what is where. And eventually the cars will be set with uh, resistor wheel detectors on them, resistor wheel sets, and that'll trigger the uh, detection. Okay. And as I have all the coding of the wiring and what color they are and what section they go to, and that all feeds into this. Wiring diagram. Which is a wiring diagram that starts up here with the DCS 200 and works its way through a um, power manager and then into detection strips and then onto the layout. Again, color coded. Okay. And this is the most recent. Let me get this out from underneath here. This is the one I just started working on. This is what goes around from the yard and goes around the U-bend and back up to the helix. And again, it shows where the wire blocks are and it tells me what wire colors go where. And eventually this will be turned into a computer generated chart as well. So that I'll be able to look back at these charts and tell what wires go where, what they do, and I won't have to try to trace wires out. The wires underneath the layout are marked and so it makes it much easier for me to follow them along to troubleshoot. Okay. okay, so this is the beginning of the helix where it goes from table level and eventually will rise up. Each level will turn around about four inches over the next. And this runs at a 33 and a half inch radius as the inside track and a 36 inch radius on the outside track. And it eventually rises. And it rises about, 20, about inches 20, 20 inches, might be a few inches more. To reach that black line on the wall. And it's about uh, somewhere around one and a half to two percent grade. 
And unlike most helixes, this is done as uh, elongated uh, instead of being just a perfect circle. Okay. To give a better track run. Okay. Okay, where are the maps? I mean, the now over here we've got uh, uh, the location for the turntable and the roundhouse. Which is located underneath all the materials needed to build the helix. Right. And one of the lines coming off of the helix on the upper deck will come across this walkway between the helix and the roundhouse to the upper deck along that black line on the wall there. Correct. And there'll be actually a double line down through there, <coughs> double main line, so that you can have one train waiting for it to come, one to come off the helix. Okay. And then once it gets to the far wall, it'll come out 18 inches and then proceed on down around the U-bend. Okay back over to the helix again. Now, behind you, there's a brick wall, which used to be a fireplace. Oh, it still I guess is. still is a fireplace. It is. Um, but we've had several YouTube uh, watchers that have already asked, what are you gonna do with the brick wall? Well, my do you first, have an idea of what Oh, well, my first do? inclination was tear it down, but I'm afraid my wife wouldn't approve of that one. <laughs> yeah. So basically, if, if you can see there's two holes in the bricks, mm -hmm. and that was where the pegs went for the mantle. We've decided we can take a front piece and put that over to cover it and use those two pegs as inserts for dowlings to hold it in place. Okay. So eventually that part of the brick wall will disappear. Well, based on the fact that this is about a year into construction, and when you say a year into construction a while ago, uh, the first video that we did was in January of 2015. That was a meet and greet. And we which was basically a meet and greet in an empty room here. And this is what's been accomplished in just a little over a year, um, which has been an awful lot of work by you, as well as members of the North Atlanta Rail Barons. Well, I think I can safely say I've painted every stick of wood in here white top and bottom. I was about to say, you've been the OCD painter. Yes. Um, and, uh, and everything has been painted um, but at looks, least once. It looks good. It does look good. And, and, and it, it is pleasing to my wife to see it. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing I've done is all the wiring on the layout. Okay. Now, uh, do you have... Uh, uh, feeling for how long it's going to take before you actually get it operational. How many lifetimes are we talking? <laughs> Good enough. Uh, Good I don't enough. know. Actually, you know, um, I'm, I'm hoping we can get the Helix finished here in the next uh, couple of months and then start putting on the second layer. Uh, and then uh, that won't be quite as much of the construction since we're not going to have the center aisle and we're going to have the Helix itself takes up the table which is eight by six feet. So it's just gonna be the 18 inch shelf that runs all the way around and putting in the support for that. I don't think it's going to be quite as complicated or quite as long. Um, the bottom is done on one by threes. I think the top's gonna to be more done, more on a level of one by twos. Mm -hmm. um, well, without giving away too much in the way of detail, have you thought about the scenery? Um, well, the scenery's partly already been considered because we have places where we talked about the river, mm -hmm. we talked about the bridges, um, and the some of the scenery depends on the industry that's in that area. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, if you're going to have grapes, you're going to have grape vines and or tree orchards or whatever, and, and that's all very much California. Mm -hmm. um, and the oil tanks uh, would probably be in a somewhat desolate area, mm -hmm. but uh, so it. it will vary somewhat. The second level will be more about uh, the mountains and mountain type scenery. More mm -hmm. specific than that, let's get the track in and, and work around what we've got and, and scenery kind of gets talked about as we build. Okay. So there's, I've had a lot of input from different people about suggestions and I realize it's uh, up to me to make those decisions, but I do appreciate the input and listening to what uh, people suggest. Okay. Thank you for having us, Brian. Sure. My pleasure. I couldn't have done this by myself, <laughs> except for the painting and the electrical and a lot of the uh, track laying. Other than that, that needed a whole group. And it has. There's a lot of people that put a lot into this. Uh, the vault 
and uh, Jim, especially those two, and, and I've done a lot in the design, consult about what do I want to see in the track, what do I want to straight, do I want it to curve, do I want it to rise and fall, um, and yourself, uh, and uh, ID. ID, and uh, so it's Bob, and ID, and uh, Tim, um, and there's been a few other people, uh, Steve, mm -hmm. Boyd uh, Bender, and, and Boyd, mm -hmm. and I uh, believe um, uh, Howard and Rob oh, yes. working Howard, on the Helix. Howard and Rob working on the Helix. Field. And also these, some of these guys came over and consulted with me before I got going to see what it is I wanted to do and what, what kind of conceptualization I had of my plans. Mm -hmm. So um, it's been a, a real group effort and all those people made a big difference in what we're looking at now. Well, there's been a lot accomplished in a year's time and we're looking forward to seeing what it looks like within the next year. I suspect if I'd done it by myself, we wouldn't be quite this far along. <laughs> it's a step in the right direction. All right. Yeah. I don't know if I want to go through there, right? I don't think I want to go through there.